welcome back to my channel so the last video I was telling you that I was going to need surgery and today I'm actually let me make sure I count the days correctly I am 12 days post surgery so I sur my surgery was scheduled for 7 30 a.m. but I was told to arrive at 5 30 so Anthony and I got there quite early and there were literally like two other people there as it started to get a little bit later more people started to arrive I just felt so out of place also excuse the lighting because it's kind of cloudy and then sunny but anyway I remember that like 10-15 minutes before I was taken to the back I just started to feel a lot of emotions and I just tried to keep it together I didn't want to cry I was definitely very scared the other surgery that I've had is a tonsillectomy so this is a lot more invasive than that was so I'm scared of needles I'm scared of blood and just all of that stuff and then knowing that it's happening to me it just made me a lot more scared but we went to the back and I had to undress myself and put on a gown my V was put in and it was to keep me hydrated at that time I think it was like seven ish the nurse was asking me some questions and the anesthesiologist came in and spoke to me and just asked me about my medical history at the time she left it was 7 20 so I knew that in 10 minutes I was going to be taken to the back to the operating room and again I just it's like my stomach or my heart dropped to my stomach because I just I knew I was going to be in a position where I had absolutely no control of what was going to happen I went in you know thinking in my head there's a possibility that you can come out of this surgery you know with out a uterus with um, a very damaged uterus so there was just a lot of things that I prepared myself for mentally because if things didn't go well I had to be ready in case they didn't I was taken to the back the nurse was wheeling me out on the bed to go back to the operating room that itself is scary the hallway that leads you into the operating rooms is a literally the hallway that you see in like the horror scary movies about hospitals or that involve hospitals it was just like a long narrow hallway with different um, operating rooms like on each side and it was just sterile cold lonely empty I remember when they moved me from the bed onto the operating table and I was just laying there expected myself to be having you know any kind of major surgeries specifically you know a surgery to to remove uh, tumors from your body it's just I think I felt everything at once and then I was just silently crying. I knew that my tears were coming down, you know, on the sides of my face. And I think the um, doctor saw that. And she kind of just came over and told me, everything's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Um, we're going to do our best. Both of the doctors were on each side just talking to me and keeping me calm. And I think the anesthesia was administered through the IV. Because after they finished talking to me, I don't remember anything. Like, at all. So, I guess I was done in like two two and a half hours so i was um sedated at about 7 40 but i guess i didn't end up waking up until about 11 30 because i didn't end up seeing anthony until about 12 and what happens is they won't let your loved ones see you until you've woken up and anthony told me that i took a minute to wake up but i mean it just everybody's body responds to anesthesia differently so I remember when they were wheeling me back into my um, room and I kept telling everybody, thank you so much for everything. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a fantastic day. Um, do you need anything? I guess I'm like extra nice when I'm <laughs> under anesthesia because I remember telling everybody like, have a great day. I hope everything's well. Like every single person that I saw, I kept saying that too. I make it back to the room. I remember the doctor came into the room and she told me that everything had gone well, the surgery, you know, was successful and there wasn't too much bleeding or too much damage to my uterus. And she did tell me that, and I remember these words, you know, because 
I, it's something you don't want to hear, but I remember clearly that she sat on the end of my bed, at the end of my bed, and said, your body is the type that will more than likely continue to make or produce more fibroid tumors. So that's definitely not something I wanted to hear, but the fact that I know that this is, you know, a diagnosis that I have, then at least I can start preventative measures early. So for example, I could take medicine um, that'll either shrink them completely or just stop them from growing if they happen to come back. Or if I do need to have surgery again, it won't need to be a full-on abdominal myomectomy. Definitely didn't want to hear that, but again, I'm just glad that I am healthy right now and that everything went well. The doctor did tell me that they removed 35 or 36 fibroid tumors from my uterus. And when I saw the pictures, I was like, how? When did they happen? You know how long were they there for when did they start growing how rapidly did they start growing because i don't know I, I i don't feel ashamed because i was unaware i didn't know and i'm just glad that they've been fully removed she moved even she removed even the smallest fibroid because like i said she did mention that my body is more than likely to make more tumors again so she didn't want to leave anything in there she wanted to get rid of everything so that there weren't any what ifs again looking at the pictures and the size and just <sighs> i'm just a little sad that i found out when they were so large because you know i had to go through all of this but I would say please have a wellness check and even if you don't have you know fibroid tumors it doesn't hurt to ask your doctor to check for them you have to keep going back and having MRIs done and if you've ever had an MRI done they suck so much especially if you are claustrophobic I didn't think I was but after being in one I have different feelings now. I did not like the process. It was a little too stressful and not to mention that they're like 20 to 40 minutes long. Anyway, that's besides the point. So the first night I stayed there, I remember being in so, so much pain. This is the kind of pain that, I don't know, maybe people who've given birth or people who've had C-sections can relate, but this kind of pain was intolerable. I felt like I had literally been sliced down the middle and then just like folded in half. I I don't know how else to explain it. And I felt just pressure. I felt swollen, bloated. I remember Anthony telling me, I'm going to show you a picture, but just so you know, it's it looks a lot worse than it is. So I was expecting, you know, like a tiny little cut. And then when he showed me the picture and it's literally from like one end to the other end of like my pelvic area I kind of freaked out a little bit internally because I mean but obviously I was doing well so my biggest concern was healing an infection and then getting better and of course being able to tolerate the pain Anthony wasn't allowed to stay the night over at the hospital so he had to leave at about 8 p.m. And from 8 until the next day, I remember sleeping in like 2 hour increments. I would sleep for 2 hours, the pain would wake me up, and then the nurse would come and administer pain medication. And I would sleep, you know, on and off every 2 hours. But the pain, I, I don't think that I could do that again. I just don't. The second day after I came home, I mean everything, everything was such a task. Getting into the car... It was such an ordeal because I just felt uncomfortable, it was painful, it hurt getting home, you know, getting out of the car, getting into the house, going up the stairs. Everything was just so difficult. Then, that night after I was home, saw that I started to get a little bit of a rash. It started on my face first because I woke up, I went to the restroom and I looked in the mirror and I had a rash all along like this area right here. I didn't really think anything of it. The next day in the morning when I woke up, I had a rash like all over my stomach, on my arms, and then my legs, as well as my neck and 
you know, like along here on my face. I think it was the sterilization medication that they used because I had like, it looked orange yellow all over my stomach and my pelvic area and I'm sure that's what they use to sterilize everything and somehow that must have migrated to my arms and my neck and my face just because of me moving around and it gave me a rash. It wasn't itchy but it was bumpy. It was like as if I had chicken pox but a lot smaller and a lot more condensed in like a, an area. I gave it about two, three days uh, before I contacted the doctor just to see if it was something to be concerned about but they did start to go down I had a catheter in and then I also had actually I have the bag here what is called an auto fuser and it came in a little bag like this and it had like a tube that had two tubes kind of forking out and those two tubes one end went into each side of the incision and actually like a little bit above the incision and it was providing lidocaine so that it could numb the area for like three days or so doctor said on the third day or whenever the lidocaine the medicine runs out she said you'll just peel up the little like tape that's around it and then you'll slowly pull out the tubes at the time I didn't think much of it I was just you know shaking my head yes okay yep got it okay fine but on the third day when the medicine had run out and I needed to take it out because there was just nothing else in there even thinking about it right now hurts again first of all why would they put tape over an incision I just wanted to leave it in forever like I just didn't mind I was gonna have this auto fuser forever because I knew that this the, the tape part was going to freaking hurt and let me tell you I was not wrong at all and I could just see the tape lifting up my skin like my actual skin because it was just that like stuck onto my skin so I just you know took a couple deep breaths and slowly started pulling the tape back then I mean I'm telling you it I feel like I probably took just as long as the surgery took to remove you know the little tubes that were inserted because I just it hurt it hurt so much when I took the tape off you know in my head you know I thought the tube was probably gonna be that much Anthony was gonna do this first but he's the kind of guy that rips off the tape and is good to go. I am not that person. So realizing that he would probably just yank it out, it made me realize that I had to do this by myself. I was pulling out the tube and I pulled out like that much and so I thought, okay, that's the end of it. No. I kept on pulling and pulling and at one point I was like, okay, is this like connected in a big circle? Like why isn't it coming out? And once I started getting closer to the end, I think the rest of the tube was coiled or like twisted in my stomach area. Because when I would pull it, I would feel twisting and uncoiling on the like upper right side of my stomach, which that didn't make any sense. So imagine I was pulling it but I could feel it uncoiling like all the way at the end. So I knew that it still had a lot left in there. Because I kept pulling it out, I literally could feel the uncoiling in my stomach. I mean, I was a hot mess. I was in the bathroom bawling my eyes out. I kept telling Anthony, I can't do this, I can't do this. Because physically, I could not do it. I had to do it twice because they were in both sides of my pelvic area. Finally managed to pull it out and then... I had to go to the other side but the other side for whatever reason the tape was just either much stickier or was on there for longer I don't know after I got the tape removed again I started to pull out the tubing part and again it just felt like every time I pulled it I feel like it didn't move at all because I would pull it and then nothing would happen but then I would pull it again and I could feel like a slow untwisting on the other side of my stomach area it wasn't even in like my pelvic area it was in my stomach 
So I would move it and I could feel the, unco the uncoiling as I would pull the tube. So that was a hot mess. After that, I felt more pain from removing the tubes than I did on the incision part. The tube holes were more painful than the big A incision on my pelvic area. As the days progressed, I was still in so much freaking pain. You know, they gave you very strong medication that I definitely did not want to be on for like a long period of time just because I know that um, some of this medication can become very addicting. So I tried to stay off of it and really take it when my pain was intolerable. I luckily weaned off of it, I want to say on the 7th, 8th day. So I'm no longer taking like those super strong medications. Notice that I have a lot of back pain. And the pain starts from like, I don't know how to explain it. It starts from like up here. And it goes all the way down to my lower back. It almost feels like it's along the lining of my spine and deep into like the muscle cavities. I feel sore if I'm lying down, if I'm standing up, if I'm sitting, if I'm walking. Another thing that I noticed is as soon as I got out, I tried to be very active because I wanted to heal quickly. So I did, you know, short little walks, but I cannot walk straight. When I walk, it's like I'm hunched over. I try to push my um, stomach out and so that I can straighten my shoulders and my back, but I can't, I can't hold that position. Like I can't walk like that because it feels like my stomach is literally being stretched out, which in turn causes pain. So I'm gonna talk to the doctor about that when I go back in for the two week checkup. I still feel very bloated. Whether I drink liquids, whether I eat, whether I, you know, if I do or don't, I still feel super, super bloated. And it's kind of, it's the kind of blow that is painful. Like, I don't even know if it's due to the swelling because I have gas or a mixture of both, but it just hurts. It feels tight. I can feel my stomach and it just feels tight. Every time I lay down or I stand up, I feel like, a little bit suffocated because of how bloated I am. I know that it's mostly due to the swelling, but hopefully that's gonna go down. I know that it's gonna take a long time for the swelling to subside. And of course, because of the incision, the only sleeping position that I can sleep on is on my back. So that's been very annoying because I feel like my back already hurts. I want to sit up, I want to sleep on my sides, and I can't. I just can't. Maybe that's also another issue that's causing the back pain. But I would say if you go through a similar surgery to this, sleep propped up with a pillow under your knees. That has been relieving a lot of pressure from my back. Hopefully, I will be able to sleep on the sides soon so that I can relieve, you know, a little bit of that pressure in the lower back part. But that's something that I've been doing also. There was one time where I sneezed, just out of nowhere, I sneezed. I am not kidding you. When that happened, I think I saw God. I saw Jesus when I sneezed. The pain internally, oh, it felt like I was being ripped open again. Literally felt like that. Anytime that I try to sneeze or cough now, I do everything. I will hold my nose. I will, you know, drink water in order to prevent it because it hurts that much. What is a little bit frustrating to me is that I loved going to the gym. I mean, I looked forward to going to workout classes and I know that when I go back, I'm literally going to start at like step zero. I cannot lift anything heavier than 10 pounds for like the next three months. But with all of that said, I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a very different video. I'm going to get back to doing my fun videos where we talk about clothes, shoes, DIYs, random things. But anyway, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Can't really get up, so bye.